about body positivity and then of course healthy eating habits but you know kind of what happens if we don't have those things aligned then we kind of are at risk of uh, developing eating disorders so that's what i'm going to be talking about um quickly about me uh, i'm uh, the president and founder of the nonprofit tarika foundation we uh, you know uh, do a lot of educational talks like this our mission is to create mental health awareness in children and teens uh, i have my private practice uh, silicon valley psychiatry and then i'm on adjunct clinical faculty at stanford um so disclaimer you know again this is mostly uh, content uh, related to providing education and and awareness uh, knowledge you know not necessarily directed to like taking this as an advice um every person has their own challenges as far as health goes so if you have anything that you've heard or you know me say in this presentation don't uh, take it like for granted i would definitely encourage you to see your your primary care doctor or your therapist if you are seeing one or your school counselor to get more clarification for yourself so uh you know we are ta talking about body positivity today and um i i thought it would be good to first kind of understand what body image is right with this buzzword about i'm having a negative bad body image or positive body image um so you know in simple terms body image is how you think and feel about your body right so um you know how you perceive it essentially is what it is and body image actually interestingly has nothing to do with your actual appearance so you may have a perception of how your body looks but you may look completely different uh you know to others so so it's a really good thing to be aware of that the way you see yourself uh does not really e equal to what others or how others see you and then you know the reason for for this again Uh, awareness talk around body image and body positivity is that we know that this can be a precursor to you know le leading to issues like disordered eating depression low self esteem and things like that so what is a healthy body image um a healthy body image means you feel comfortable in your body and you feel good about the way you look so that's that's really so instead of having uh, terms like good body image or bad body image i i would like you to like think about focusing on this new term or like this term rather healthy body image because uh, you know good and bad or or you know perfect body image those are just um labels that have been imposed on us by our society um you know we uh, know that there's a lot of influence of social media these days especially for you guys because you interact primarily on social media and of course this pandemic hasn't helped us to have you know any other source of interaction so we are doing more and more virtual interactions and posting and and chatting and seeing people all the time but it's really important to know that the you know the the way people appear to be on those media platforms doesn't equal to how they really appear in their real life as you know there's a lot of curation we can do there's a lot of filters and a lot of things people can do to show they have a perfect body but there's not nothing such as a perfect body we as physicians talk about healthy body and healthy body image and so what does a person who have a, has an healthy body image look like or what do they have so they have an undistorted view of their body and appearance like i said the perception of you know how your body appears to you i may perceive that my nose looks a little twisted or it's a little big for my face but you know somebody else might be like no it just looks fine so that's my distorted view of how i'm perceiving my nose to be on my face or certain body body part how it appears to me and and that's a very subjective thing so if you are more of like you have less of that you know we all have certain things that we don't like about ourselves as long as it's not to the extent where it's become totally like that's the folk fixation and you're constantly thinking about that distorted kind of uh, you know thought that's where it can be more problematic so so a person with healthy body image doesn't have un, you know has an undistorted or no distorted view of their body or appearance and um 
they do identify or definitely keep this mind in mind that uh, you know the unrealistic and unattainable standards of beauty and thinness that are portrayed in the media are actually you know what it is i mean so it's 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 the standards of beauty and thinness that have been you know portrayed on on media of different kind is what gives us this false perception that i am not like them and it's it's rather unrealistic to to appear or look like them um uh, because you know that's again uh you just a a standard that that doesn't really equal to healthy body and i'll i'll tell you why as we move along in the presentation uh if you're not spending a large amount of time checking your body or perceived flaws that's you know when you can say i have a healthy body image so again you know i may feel about certain part of my body not looking right but as long as i'm not spending hours fixating on that, that and checking and and looking at like yeah it does seem twisted it does seem little fat here or what not that's not right for us um and then of course avoiding comparing uh to others it's just such a hard thing at your age um i know your you know at your age if i go back and look at my middle school years um that was the time you know i was trying to fit in i wanted to be in a nice friend group i wanted to be liked i wanted to be accepted and and you know you are in this what we call as developmentally classic identity form identity formation phase and so all of those you know things are very important peer acceptance is super important thing and and you are surrounded by peers who whose company you enjoy and unfortunately you can't help it but compare yourself to them that kind of happens so naturally but you have to keep in mind that um comparing yourselves as far as body appearance goes is really i mean even in other dimensions but particularly body appearance goes is is really not healthy because you know everybody comes from a different background um and and different genetic kind of uh, factors play into their growth and their body and uh, people are from different cultural or ethnic backgrounds um so you know you, you may want to look like them because they look good to you but if you ask them they may be having problems with their own body image and it's just not fair because you know um i talk about like how you know we have five fingers in the hand and if the pinky finger starts comparing its itself to the thumb it's it's not going to feel like oh i can function like all the things that thumb can do i can't do that much uh, and i'm short and i'm not like you know i'm sticky or whatever but it's like it's important to see that how each of our fingers is unique in its own way and they have their own unique functions and they still look good in in their own way that's kind of what it is it's it's pointless to compare um you know one finger to other or apples to oranges just because broadly they are fruits right because you know we we think oh it's a fruit so you know i can compare this to that but they are very unique different fruits one is citrus one is you know sweet so keeping that in mind that our differences make us unique and not necessarily sticking on to that comparison which i think is not easy to do but that certainly helps to have a, a healthy body image and accepting you know some dissatisfaction with one's body image or appearance but at the same time not letting that in the way of your life so so i you know i am not very tall so you can't see my you know you know height because i'm sitting on the chair but i am not even 5 feet 1 1 inch tall and so i was one of the shortest girl in my class and i would really feel insecure about this part of me when i was in middle and high school years um but you know uh, there were you know other kids who were like tall or somewhere you know a little more plum and and so so I, you know it it would occur to me that oh i'm i'm like not tall i wish i was tall but then you know i started focusing on some other attributes that i had that you know made me the person i am uh, i i also used to wear glasses back then and sometimes got teased and i know during these age group the peers can be mean and they can tease you for how you appear and um so i used to be teased for wearing glasses and i was the short girl 
but I, I did really well in my class academically and socially. So I had my own kind of things that made me feel like, oh, I have some positive attributes that make me me. So that's kind of how I was able to overcome that. Uh, and as I started finding other things that boosted my self-esteem, this started to become less and less important for me. And that body dis dissatisfaction didn't really kind of uh, get down, get me down. All right. So um, in interest of time, we'll keep going. And so, you know, now that I talked about how you can help yourself, uh, how what is a healthy body image? I would like to talk about how you can help yourself to have a body image that's healthy. So, so again, you know, again, really getting back to what makes a lot of influence uh, on us these days is, is media. And so really being careful every time you're watching a post or, you know, seeing something or watching a movie or, or whatever that is, or a TikTok video to really remind that, you know, what appears to be is not the truth. And um, that shouldn't, you know, drive how you perceive yourself uh, and your body image. Um, you know, practice regular acknowledgement of the parts that help you do things and not the flaws that you perceive. So shifting your focus, we call this in the field of psychology as positive reframing. Like I have a choice. I can look at the glass half empty or half full. So, you know, every time just looking at half glass empty attitude is only going to make me feel sad and depressed about like, oh, this sucks. But on the other hand, if I can uh, be a little bit more, um, you know, like, objective about like, okay, let me see how does the glass look when it's half full, look at the other side of it, that can give me a little perspective on, oh, it's not all bad, there are lots of good parts to this. So that's the same thing, like, acknowledging that there are so many wonderful parts of our body that help us do so many activities and make make us creative, make us, you know, work out, make us exercise, make us move around and travel and whatnot. And it's not just the appearance and not just focusing on the flaws that seem like not right to you. Making a list of functions you perform with your body. So that also like I think gives you a different perspective that my body helps me do so many things. Like I said, like, you know, my legs help me walk. I can't swim if I had this healthy four arms, you know, two arms and four legs. Um, and, you know, whenever I'm doing a particular activity, what body part comes in you know, to help me do that and how grateful I should be for that is really important. And then, you know, cut down or work towards stopping checking your body flaws and again, comparing yourself to other people's bodies. I think that again is a biggest uh, source of stress that, you know, triggers a lot of poor body image. And so, you know, really focusing on if, if this particular interaction or this particular social media interface is generating a lot of my insecurities, then I rather spend less time on that. Or I, you know, you know, do something else that promotes my confidence in other things I'm capable of. So, you know, unfortunately, socially and culturally, we are in a world where, again, you know, all you see is like, you, you need to have this perfect body body image, you need to look certain ways, you need to have flat bellies to wear your crop tops, whatnot, right? And so we know that we are like, unfortunately, even though with all this awareness that I'm trying to tell you about, there is a still a drive to strive to get a perfect body and look perfect uh, and have that so-called uh, perfect body image, which by the way, I, I said, it's just a term that really doesn't truly exist. Uh, it's just a made up thing. So, um, you know, so we, we need to be also aware of what are the dangers of striving to have that perfect body image. Um, so, you know, what we understand medically and psychologically is that that level of perfection, if you're striving for, is really not healthy for you. Um, again, it's encouraged, unfortunately, a lot by our media and the society we live, but it's not healthy. A healthy body is determined by your body mass index. And I, I, I'm sure some of you know about this, but just in case you didn't, I'm gonna just quickly tell you about what a BMI is. It's based on your height and weight. And it's really the way as physicians, we determine if you are healthy or your body is healthy or not. 
And so a BMI of under 18.5 makes you underweight, a healthy range is 18.5 to 24 or almost 25. And then, you know, about that is overweight and about 30 is obese. Uh, so I think what often happens is, and this is what I see with, with the kids I work with, is that in order to strive that perfect body that they see that other girls are portraying on social media or, or actresses or whatever, you know, magazines you see, everybody's just like having this perfect body. For, for that, often you have to weigh, weigh, lose so much weight that you come under this, um, you know, underweight category of body weight. Um, so, you know, usually what happens medically to you when you are becoming underweight? So we see a lot of issues with kids presenting with fatigue and, you know, exhaustion because of what we call as anemia, which is because of lack of proper nutrition, because you're skipping meals or restricting eating proper things and like a full whole plate meal that's encouraged. Um, you are getting deficient on, you know, nutrition, nutritional things that are important for your growth. Uh, your bones start to get weak and that's known as osteoporosis. You can start having heart related rhythm problems. Uh, and you are certainly more prone for infections and illnesses. And, and if you have a uh, an injury, it takes a long time to heal. So it's really important to remind yourself that even though our media tells us to have that perfect body or this like a, you know, ideal body, we are not supposed to look the same. We are all coming from different backgrounds and we have different body shapes and types. And you just need to accept yourself the way you are and work on that self-acceptance, that self-compassion and self-love and see how, you know, you are beautiful the way you are. So, you know, I know particularly at, at your age, you are really trying to fit in and that identity, you know, becomes such a big part of, you know, how it makes you feel good about yourself. And unfortunately, because there's so much emphasis on how you look, that often becomes that source of, you know, getting that positive self-esteem that we are striving for at this age. And, and so what are some of the other ways to boost your self-esteem besides focusing on body appearance and body image? Uh, I, I would like you to like, you know, think about again, this whole person philosophy that we try to like educate kids who struggle with poor body image, that you are more than just your body, appearance and body image, that's your perception, you are more than that. You are a person who has so many positive attributes. You have, you know, some internal amazing assets as we call them. These are your assets, like your character building blocks that make you you. you if you are kind and compassionate and honest and uh, a team player, you are going to be well accepted and <clears throat> well liked by everyone around you your creativity, your talents, the external assets, the gifts you are blessed with, whether you are a, a, a writer or you are a painter or you are a musician, you are an actor, whatever that might be, you're an athlete, those are your other you know, positive attributes or your external assets that make you you as a whole person your you know, quirks, your life story, the upbringing, the background you come from, your skills, you know, all those make you, you. So it's, it's hard to kind of, you know, absorb this kind of information at your age. It may sound pretty cliche to you, but I, I tell you, this is really a way also to, you know, counteract some of the poor body image. Often that seems like that's the biggest identity, you know, uh, indicator for you to also move beyond that and try at least. And as, of course, you grow and you, you will go into the real world, you'll figure out this actually is what ultimately makes the person who they are and how that plays a big role in your overall self-esteem. So when is body dissatisfaction a problem? So, you know, if you are finding yourself having a negative self-talk about your body and it's coming with negative intense emotions that you suddenly feel sad or anxious or you know just feel like ah oh, you know this these thoughts are just not making me feel happy right now that's an indication that you're thinking too much about 
yourself, uh, you know, primarily focusing on your body. Um, if you're preoccupied by your muscle size and shape, and this is again, not just pertinent to girls, but much more to the boys. So we understand that both girls and boys tend to have body image concerns, even though it's talked more, more commonly for girls, we are seeing a lot more of this happening for boys as well. And so, you know, preoccupation, you know, about, you know, like how I should look and how I should, you know, sh your shape should be um, a persistent concern around, you know, shape and weight, no matter how your body may be changing because you're growing, you know, during this time. So, you know, boys tend to enter puberty phase a little later than girls. And so high school years is when they shot up. Girls tend to kind of grow a lot more during middle school years. So, um, you know, it is kind of a, a kind of a funny phase or it's a little bit of a awkward phase rather that, you know, you are uh, starting to, you know, starting to become, you know, this young adult. Uh, and, and so often during those phases, you may not look good as much as you will end up being. Uh, but it's really important reminder that you may look like a stick figure today, but as you you are growing and as your puberty and hormone changes are happening, you will build the muscle and you will turn out to, you know, look differently. So really having, you know, that reassurance when you feel this way. Uh, and if you're starting to avoid daily life experience or special events, because you feel there's some body shame that you're experiencing or dissatisfaction that makes you feel uncomfortable or insecure or, um, you know, awkward in front of others, then that's a, a red flag. And then, you know, checking weight, no matter what the number is. And then, of course, if there's more things that are like taking you towards disorder, eating and eating disorder, ultimately, that is what leads to, you know, the biggest concern. So, you know, that's a nice segue to give you a little education on what is an eating disorder and when should we start getting help for it. What we understand is that the sooner we can get help for it is the better. Uh, and that's why I thought this would be important for you guys to hear. So, you know, if any of you is starting to feel like I'm getting driven by this body image concern and I'm like starting to fixate on that or I'm starting to like, do, do some extreme diet or I'm binge eating or overeating and then restricting or trying to throw up, then that is important. And then if you're feeling like you're not reassured, even from your friends and families, even if they are saying to you constantly, no, you're not fat and you're still not ready to believe that and you're still not willing to accept that or you're not able to, it's not like you're intentionally trying to not believe that, but the distorted thinking around body image sometimes can be so strong that no matter what others are telling you, how much reassurance they provide, you may just not feel like that that matters or that really is something you agree with. So those are things that are telling us that, oh, you entered a little bit of a concerning phase and maybe moving towards an eating disorder. So, um, you know, what's the prevalence? How often are we seeing this problem, you know, currently? In, in your age group. So uh, what we know is the lifetime prevalence for eating disorder in teens is about 2.7%. And it's certainly seen more in females compared to males, but it's not like males as, you know, not, it doesn't exist. The percentage is, as you see, it's about 3.8% in females and 1.5% in males. And, and it does increase modestly with, with age. And then uh, this was based on a survey that, um, was conducted by National Institute of Mental Health. Uh, and, and, you know, they basically saw, you know, there were three primary eating disorder types they saw with, with these teens uh, in this survey. And those were anorexia nervosa, bulimia nervosa, and binge eating disorders. So you might be familiar with some of these terms, but I want to take a moment also to make sure uh, since we are talking about this is not a phenomenon that we just see in females, it's also been seen more and more also in males. What do we see as signs in eating of an eating disorder in a male? So again, somewhat similar overlapping symptoms, but definitely there is um, excessive, you know, concern around the shape uh, and um, building muscle 
and not feeling like you're fit enough or you have, you know, this fitness freak kind of um, image that you are following and you want to like look certain ways, um, you know, and, and then one can go to whatever extent to do achieve that using, you know, excessive protein powder or nutrients that are not healthy for you for your age you know, using uh, other kinds of uh, unhealthy methods to get to that, that place. So again, you know, it is really important to not ignore this um, problem that uh, can also exist in both genders, including in, 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 in males along with females. So really quick blurb on what is anorexia and its signs. So I'm going to actually go over this pretty quickly, I'm mostly interested in talking to you guys about the impact of anorexia medically on your body, which comes in the next slide. But essentially, you know, anorexia is a self-imposed starvation uh, in which young women like, you know, you guys, uh, like young teens uh, are usually so um, concerned about their body image that they start doing things to um, achieve that perfect image they have in their head. And, and that comes with the price of weight loss and, um, you know, obsessing over calories, spending many hours to exercise and burn off excessive calories, skipping meals. And then it can also lead to irregular period and constant feeling of exhaustion. So um, what's the impact of anorexia on your body? So, I mean, you know, I just want, uh, I mean, this is a, a, a kind of a busy slide, but essentially just briefly, if you can see uh, my goal here was to tell you that it impacts different organs and different systems, pretty much most of your body and, and including your brain to hair to all the way from heart down, you know, to your, to your gut and kidneys and whatnot. So I see this sometimes in some of the anorexia patients and we have to hospitalize them and do forceful you know, feeding and stuff like that to restore their medical health. So again, I, I'm not trying to scare you here. My goal here is to just help you understand that, you know, sometimes when you are so driven in that mode of like, I want to lose weight and I want to look certain way because I feel fat here or, or you know, you know, even you're getting to underweight weight, your BMI is starting to go below the normal range. Sometimes because those eating disorders thoughts tend to get so strong, you are in this swing of things that you don't even realize how it's damaging your body. So, so some of this can give you that, you know, awareness and insight to stop yourself from moving in that direction and find healthier ways to manage your body image concerns. Uh, moving to bulimia nervosa, again, you know, this is a little bit of different type of an eating disorder where people kind of go on what we call as binges. So eat large amounts of food at one time. And then after eating so much, you know, a few minutes to hours, they may feel guilty about eating so much and consuming so many calories. So they go out and, you know, immediately try to throw up or exercise excessively or use diet pills or laxatives to, you know, you, you know, to lose that um, extra food or the food or the calories you've consumed. And it can be a very vicious kind of self-perpetuating cycle. Uh, and, you know, people often get caught up in that. And so, again, if you are noticing any of these telltale signs in yourself where you are make, feeling like I need to go right after I eat to the bathroom and throw up or I'm, you know, starting to hold food or I'm having large amounts of food uh, at times when I'm, you know, trying to starve and then suddenly I'm so hungry, I, I kind of binge eat. Those are all starting points of disordered eating and that's when you need to really, you know, start to look for getting help. Uh, and again, like bulimia, uh, like anorexia nervosa, bulimia nervosa also impacts all your body systems and it has a lot of, you know, detrimental effects. Um, there is another thing called as binge eating disorder. Again, it is um, somewhat similar to bulimia where you're eating unusually large amounts of food in short periods of time. Um, with the, with the feeling that overeating is, uh, you know, or you're feeling out of control. But, you know, um, unlike bulimia, you're not in this case actually doing any self-induced vomiting or purging as we call it. 
And often there's not much of a weight shift that happens because of this kind of behavior. So again, you know, I'm seeing more and more of this lately with the kids because, you know, uh, it seems like, you know, you guys are more knowledgeable and aware of uh, eating disorders like anorexia and bulimia. And you may feel like this is my, might be an in-between safe path. But again, medically and, and health-wise, even this is not good for you because even though your weight is not shifting and you're not necessarily going down on your weight, it is still impacting negatively on your body organs. Um, and that fluctuation is not good for you. And then there is a newer type of eating condition that we call as ARFID, which is avoidant restrictive food intake disorder. This is also, it's a, it's a comparatively rare kind of eating disorder, but some kids who have picky eating or selective eating, um, they can sometimes move into this kind of eating disorder. So it's important to also be aware that if you're starting to like limit too much what you eat and you are starting to not grow as much as you're supposed to at your age, then that can be a, a warning sign for getting help as well. So uh, I want to conclude by saying that healthy body also includes a healthy body image. And um, just like we take care of our body by eating nutritious food, the whole plate method, I'm sure you guys have been educated about that. Um, so we want to have the right amounts of all kinds of healthy nutrients for us, including carbohydrates and protein and fats and the right type of good fats. And, and having those three full meals of the day, along with that, you know, exercising to stay fit and healthy, not necessarily to look a certain way, shifting that focus from that, and also taking care of your mind by meditating, being mindful, taking a minute to practice mindfulness. And I, I love the mindful eating exercise. If I had more time, I would have loved to go over that with you, which also helps a lot with managing like you know, eating, healthy eating and healthy body image. So that's when you can really be happy in your life. And, um, you know, I can't emphasize, I mean, all these things may sound like, oh, this is like an adult talking and, you know, you, I'm just like lecturing you, but I, I think, you know, these are all validated by research that we need to really take, you know, this in a, in a positive stride and use it to our advantage, use our body, for things that's meant to, you know, for it to, to be doing to help us lead a happy and fulfilling life. Um, so I, you know, I actually have a bunch of resources and I'm happy to send this slide uh, for you guys to look at some resources yourself. Um, in addition to that, we have a podcast and a YouTube channel that you can hear and watch. Um, there's a actually really nice body um, image or body dysmorphia series, um, you know, podcast um, that our youth did. So it might be fun to hear those and see how, you know, you can get help for that. Um, there's a lot more information about the help, uh, you know, you can get and how you can recognize these things early and, and get help from seeing your primary care doctor, a nutritionist and a therapist, and sometimes a psychiatrist like me. So with that, thank you very much. Um, and uh, if you have any questions that come to you, you can email me or, you know, um, you can also go to our website and, and subscribe and, and attend our future events. Thank you very much.